Hey, everybody, and thanks for joining me today. Uh, this is Gene Marks. Uh, hopefully, uh, some of you guys have seen me speak at the SEMA show. I've been doing a lot of other work uh, with SEMA over the years, and uh, I am pleased to be providing, actually not very pleased to be providing you this webinar today, all about different ways that you can navigate your business um, through the current coronavirus pandemic that is going on. Um, this webinar is really designed for anybody that's in you know, the car and trucking business, whether you're a manufacturer, a distributor, a retailer, a public publishing company, uh, anything that's involved in the automotive, the automotive aftermarket uh, business, um, this is going to be specific tips and, and, and ideas for you to consider. Uh, hopefully the webinar won't last too long. I want to just get right to the facts. At the very end of this webinar, I'll be providing you my complete contact information so you can feel completely comfortable reaching out to me, emailing me. If you have any specific questions as they relate to your business, I'm happy to do that and, and happy to entertain any of those um, you know, any of those questions that you have. So it, without further ado, let's get started. I've got 10 specific actions that I need you to take now. We are obviously in the middle of this thing. It is going to go on for months. Depending on the part of the country that you're in, you might already have been shut down or your employees are not allowed to come to work. Uh, if you are in a part of the country where your employees can come to work, you haven't been shut down, good for you, but I got news for you. There's a high likelihood that that is coming your way as well because this is reality. And the whole point of doing all of this, whether you believe in a lot of numbers, don't believe in a lot of numbers, uh, it doesn't make a difference which way you lean politically. The bottom line is, is that um, our healthcare system right now cannot handle the number of cases that could potentially come up. Um, no one is saying that it is. It is. this is the bubonic plague. This is not an issue of where people, or a high amount of people are going to be dying or a high percentage of people are going to be dying. The people that are really subject to this are the older and the ones that are vulnerable um, and compromised immune systems um, or with pre-existing conditions. And unfortunately, because of the way the news has been disseminated, everybody is aware of this. So uh, the, the you know public policy officials are really concerned that if anybody has like a, the sniffles, they're going to come running into the hospital about that. Uh, they're trying to avoid that. They're trying to keep people distanced from each other. So if people come down with real conditions or get real sick, uh, they can at least have the capacity to handle them. So it's really a, a management issue right now is what this all is all about. Again, this is not... This is not a killer virus, but it is something that um, could really have a big impact on our healthcare system. And so because of that, uh, we're seeing the government take its action. And, and, and as a result, it's having a big impact on all of our businesses. So I've got some suggestions for you, particularly if you are really being impacted by this. You've got to conserve cash. You have got to navigate yourself through this. And you have to configure, consider that it's going to probably be a few months of significant disruption to keep your business going. So the first action that I'm going to tell you to do right now is to get a loan from the Small Business Association, the SBA. The SBA has set up a new program called the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Program. I want to make sure that you understand that this is not a typical SBA thing. A typical SBA loan is given through an, a bank uh, that is issued, that is, you know, has been authorized to issue SBA loans. And these banks are or um, they, they, you know, they issue the loans and the SBA just guarantees them. This is different. These are loans that are being given out directly by the SBA under their disaster loan program. These are the same kind of loans that they give out to businesses that have, uh, you know, struck in disaster areas, with tornadoes and floods or whatnot. So they can give these loans out. You go, you apply for the loan directly through the SBA. You don't have to worry about a bank being involved. And I am told that because of your applying directly, the approval process and money in your hands process is much, much quicker to get you the cash. How much cash are we talking about? You can get up to $2 million for your business by going through this program. And I'm telling you that most businesses, particularly if they're in any area that is affected by the coronavirus, and obviously there's a lot of businesses that are, they you will qualify for this. You can get up to a $2 million loan to see you through this issue. The loan has very low interest rates, 2.75% if you're a nonprofit, up to 3.75% if you are a for-profit business and you can pay the loan back over a 30 year period of time. Here's even some stipulations that you can uh, pay these loans back early as well. So you can really view this as just a way to get money in your bank to pay your payroll, pay your main vendors, pay whatever operating expenses that you can avoid, see yourself through 
And then when you start building up your business again, um, you can pay back the loan, um, you know, and give it back to the SBA, and then you're done, and you walk away. Or if you still have the cash, you you know, you have it, and and you can pay it back over 30 years. So you really want to um, focus on getting this SBA loan. As I talk right now, uh, there has been no legislation in Congress for relief, although I'm expecting legislation to finally happen this week once the Senate gets their act together and the House approves their stuff. Marco Rubio. And the Senate Small Business Committee has been fast tracking their bill specifically designed <clears throat> for small businesses. And why that's important to you is that they, they're, they're payroll grants through the Small Business Association. These are grants to cover your payroll through June 30th so that you don't even, you know, you don't have to pay the money back. So keep a close eye. Google, set up a Google alert. Keep an eye out for Marco Rubio's plan, uh, the bill that he is sponsoring through Congress right now. It may be part of an overall relief bill or it might be a separate bill. I do expect that to get passed though. And when that happens, it will provide significant relief for small businesses just to take care of your payroll. Go to sba.gov. I don't have to give you any more specific you know, URLs than that. Once you get there, you will see what you can, uh, you know, you, where you'll get directed to go and get your loans. So number one, get money from the SBA to see you through. Number two, besides the SBA, consider some local funding and consulting resources as well. Depending on the state that you're in, all states have applied for and are applicable to allow their businesses to get these SBA loans. So you should have no problem doing that. Many states already have industrial development loans, bridge financing, micro loans, not only states, but cities. Um, I'm in Philadelphia, and the, the city of Philadelphia has got its own loan programs that were already in existence for small businesses or cash strap businesses or startups. You want to go to your state's website. Every single state has got something separate set up uh, that's addressing the coronavirus and what they're doing. And they all have separate sections for businesses and they're all pointing you towards different loan programs. Be aware some of these loans have already been existence and they're or in existence and and they're really designed for people that are uh, hiring people or growing your business or acquiring equipment or whatever but if you ask and you push a little bit i know a lot of state legislatures are looking to change some of those rules so that it can allow you to to get it re regarding this pandemic so um you, there could be money available from your state available as well definitely check that out also check out small business development centers as well. There's the website. They are part of the Small Business Association, although they're a separate part, <clears throat> excuse me, of the Small Business Association, Small Business Administration. The um, Small Business Development Centers are usually located among colleges and universities around the country. They are free services for small businesses. They don't provide cash, but they provide people. They can provide you with accountants, finance people, marketing help, computer and technology help as well. Lean on your local small business development center. They have the resource that might be able to help you if you don't have the resources internally. And also reach out to an organization called SCORE. It's an association that's been around for a long time, again, affiliated with the SBA. SCORE is an association that has older, seasoned, uh, you know, more veteran entrepreneurs and CEOs and leaders that are looking to advise small businesses. And boy, if there's any time where your business needs some advice, this is the time to do it. Go to SCORE. You can specifically ask for people that are in the industry, that, that are familiar with auto restoration, for example, or manufacturing or, or some type of distribution within the auto space, you can ask for that. And they have specific people that are in the industries that might be able to help you. So I strongly recommend that you reach out to SCORE as well for some consulting resource. That's your second uh, action. The third action has to do with taking advantage of corporate generosity. Believe it or not, the big corporations are reaching out to help smaller businesses and they want to do it for all industries, uh, not necessarily anything particular. And 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 this industry in particular, um, you know, is, is really a backbone of small business and there are big companies that want to help. Facebook is setting up a hundred million dollar fund to help small businesses in all industries. These are grants and loans. You can reach out to Facebook, go and Google them and find out where this fund is um, and, and perhaps apply and get some of that money. JP Morgan is setting up a $50 million fund to help small businesses. Again, mostly grants, uh, some loans as well, but this is free money for those people that apply to it. 
um, the loan you know lender called Kiva is offering loans up to fifteen thousand dollars at a zero percent interest rate. The nonprofit Opportunity Fund, if you Google them, are setting up a fund right now of an unspecified amount, but it will be many millions to help small businesses all around the country. And then look in your local region to see what what benefits are being offered. For example, if you're in the Seattle area, both Microsoft and Amazon are offering programs for their small businesses in their local area. If you're in the Austin area, Mark Cuban, his business is offering um, programs to help out um, local businesses in his area. Um, I know in the Philadelphia area, the New York area, down south, down in Memphis, down in areas where there are places of, of larger corporations are offering help to their local small businesses that are there. So reach out to them, do a little Googling around, and you will find that many of these companies are offering financial system. Again, you need cash, and you've got cash out there from the SBA, from the state, potentially from your city or region, and also from corporations. There is a lot of sympathy and empathy out there for small businesses, whether you're a manufacturer, an auto restore, in the painting business, uh, you know, distribution, you, there's cash out there that you can get, some in the form of loans, some in the form of grants. Take advantage of it now and get some money in the bank. Which brings me to action number four. As a business owner and a business person, it is time for you to dig very deep into your general ledger. Have your accountant or your bookkeeper print out your general ledger from the past six months. So we're in March now, you wanna go back as far as September and make sure that it's detailed. The general ledger is all the transactions that are going through your books and your accounting records. It'll be every transaction, every payment that you made, every payment that you received. If you're going to look at the last six months, it might be, I don't know, a couple of hundred pages worth of stuff. I'm telling you to go through it. Print it out. Pour yourself a cup of coffee or a shot of Jack Daniels, whatever you need, and you need to go through your general ledger line by line. Why? Because you are going to find expenses in your general ledger that are going to raise an eyebrow. You're going to have questions. I'm not saying there's any funny business going on, just things that you weren't familiar with or things that you were, might want to question. Your goal here is to go through the very details of your business, the very nuts and bolts, identify certain expenses that are being paid right now and freeze them. Over the years, if you're like me, you've probably signed up for different services. You might have recurring expenses or um, you know monthly financial kinds of things and you kind of forget about them. Now is the time not to forget about them. So take out your red pen, circle the expenses that you're questioning, the ones that you want to hold up or suspend or freeze, and even circle some of the expenses and some of the vendors that you're paying where you might want to go back and negotiate with them, which I'm going to get into in just a moment. But Take a deep dive into your general ledger, get into the nitty gritty, go through your books, pull out the cash. You're again, like I've said before, and like I keep saying, your goal here is to save money, to put cash in the bank, because this will end. It is a short term thing. This is not the depression. We're going to see the markets continue to go down. We're going to see a lot of bad news over the next few weeks, and then the wave will pass us, and we're going to get back to doing business as we were. And the smart business owners that keep cash in the bank by taking some of these steps, they're the ones that will survive this and navigate through it and be able to emerge and be strong afterwards. So minimize those expenses. Look at the details in your general ledger, which brings me to action number five. <clears throat> Excuse me. Negotiate with your larger suppliers, your vendors, and your bankers. This is not 2009 when we had the last great recession. There is a lot of capital that is out there. There is a lot of goodwill that is out there. I've had six clients call me just this past week telling me that their bankers called them asking what can they do to help. That is not something that we saw in 2009 because the bankers were not picking up the phone then. What it means is that the financial st system is still strong. It is still stable. There is plenty of capital that's out there. Talk to your banker if you owe them money. You want to talk about potentially deferring your payments. The big banks around the country, a lot of the community and the independent banks as well, they are very empathetic to their smaller customers going through this. They know that this is a short-term thing, and I've had client after client tell me they've been able to negotiate further payment plans with them or defer payments out. Um, by just talking to them. The same goes with your larger suppliers and your larger vendors. When you're talking to those suppliers and their vendors, 
you know, not the little guys, because they got the same problems we all do. You want to talk to the larger guys, the cable companies, the public utilities, the ones that have, are in charge of your internet. You know who they are. Talk to them about deferring your next payment for another 30 or 60 days. You will be pleasantly surprised at the reaction that you get from them because a lot of those suppliers themselves, listen, it's good PR, it's good media for them. They don't want to be uh, in the news of, of, of getting in the way of small business or harming them. Many of them, your insurance company as well, they will be very open to negotiating and having you defer payments so you can keep cash in the bank. I didn't put here on this action, but I want to add one more thing. Your customers, you need to get cash in quicker. Your customers, particularly your smaller customers, are having similar types of cash flow concerns. Make sure that you're taking credit cards. Reach out to your customers and offer for them to pay you early. Offer them discounts for paying you early so that you can get the cash. It's worth giving up a few dollars so that you can get more dollars in the bank. Receivables are not going to feed your family. Cash is going to feed your family. Talk to your customers and offer them incentives for paying early, just like talking to your suppliers your vendors and your bankers and ask them and negotiate and tell them that you'd like to pay a little bit later and what can they do for you? They will do stuff for you. So what have we learned so far? Number one, get a loan from the Small Business Association. Low interest rates, 30 year payback up to 2 million bucks, quicker approvals than you're um, used to seeing and keep an eye out for potential grants from the Small Business Association to help you with payroll. Go to your local states and, and get consulting and also get money that could be available through some already established loan programs. Take advantage of some of those corporate offers that I mentioned before from Facebook, Microsoft, JP Morgan, Kiva, and others. The list is growing, so keep your eyes peeled for that. Take a deep dive into your general ledger. Identify any expenses that you think that are unnecessary, ones that you can freeze or suspend or even get rid of. Negotiate down. Get into the nitty gritty and cut back on some of those expenses now to see you through this cash crunch that you're going through. And finally, negotiate extended payments with your largest vendors and suppliers and with your bank as well. In addition to doing that, um, talk to your customers and give them some incentives for getting money in early. Pay by credit card or just give them discounts so that you can get the money into your bank account. We're halfway there. Those are five out of 10 actions that I need you to take. Let me go through my remaining five. Number six, understand the new tax rules. The Treasury Department just announced that they are pushing back the payment and the filing deadline for all tax returns, that's both corporate and personal, to July 15th, 2020, which is great. So you don't have to make a payment if you owe taxes. Uh, you can hold on to the money. You don't have to pay it to the middle of July. You don't have to file your return until the middle of July. So that's all in well and good. However, if you are expecting a refund on your tax return for your business didn't do too well, you had some transaction that's caused a loss and you paid in too much taxes last year, if you're expecting a refund this year, file your taxes now. Do not wait until July 15th because the quicker you file your taxes, the quicker you will get your refund. It usually takes the IRS about 21 days and they are honoring that commitment. So get your tax returns in and get your refund in the bank now. Talk to your accountant if you're not sure, but just make sure that you're taking full advantage of these new tax rules. Now, let's turn to your employees. It was only just a few weeks ago when our biggest issue was finding good employees for our business. We were all shorthanded, running around, how are we going to get all this work done? And then all of a sudden, that's a few weeks later, and we're, we're laying off employees. It's crazy. So people are being sent home. Everybody is a little bit scared, a little bit nervous. Your goal, your goal is to make sure that you're managing your workforce in such a way that you're going to keep them around so that when it's time to get back in business, and I'm telling you, it is going to be time to get in back in business sooner than you think. You want to make sure your full workforce is ready to go. Well, the government has come out with some new rules about sick and family leave time that you need to be aware of because it may cost you, but then you can also possibly get the money back. So the first is paid sick leave. 
The government has issued a new law. It's called the Emergency Paid Sick Leave Act. And here are the facts that you need to know. It is effective on April 2nd is when it starts for anybody that takes sick leave and will be effective through the end of 2020. It affects any employer with less than 500 full-time or part-time employees, less than 500 full-time and part-time employees, and a part-time employee is anybody that's working more than 20 hours a week. So, you know, again, I know people are arguing that it doesn't affect like larger corporations, but they already have a lot of these programs in place right now. Don't worry about that. Worry about your own business. Now, if your company has less than 50 employees, you can apply for an exemption to the Department of Labor saying that this law would jeopardize the viability of your business. Although no promises are being made, uh, you know, my sources tell me, the people that I talk to in Washington, that any, uh, you know, if you've got less than 50 employees and you just, uh, you, you write to the Department of Labor, uh, again, get your accountant or your lawyer involved, you're, you're almost surely going to be exempt from this. So you'll be out of it if you have 50 employees. So really, this affects companies with 50 or more employees up to 500 employees. You can't require your employees to take paid time off if they are need to go out on sick time, which I'll explain to you who qualifies for sick time in a minute. And you cannot terminate your employees if they're taking time off for sick time during this as well. So this is a time right now where employees' jobs are just protected. And that is the fact, and that is just the way it's gonna be. And obviously that, you know, in all cases, it might not be the greatest, but this is the way it is. You can't terminate your employees because they're taking time off or they're claiming benefits under sick time um, because of the coronavirus. So who's allowed to, re to claim benefits? These are the employees that you need to be aware of. First of all, any employees that are subject to federal, state, or local quarantine or an isolation order because they've attracted COVID-19. By the way, so we know, corona is the virus, coronavirus. COVID-19 is the actual uh, disease that you get from it. It's kind of like you have the, you know, the HIV virus, Got you. you could be HIV positive, but not everybody with HIV gets AIDS. Uh, AIDS is the disease that's caused by HIV. So corona, you know, corona is the virus, coronavirus, COVID-19 is the actual disease. Anybody that's been subject to a quarantine or isolation order, they're allowed to take off sick time. Anybody that's been advised by a healthcare provider to self-quarantine, uh, they can take off, they can claim for sick time. Anybody that's experienced just symptoms and they're seeking a medical diagnosis, they can take sick time. The idea here is to get these people out of the workforce and out of your building and quarantining themselves in their own homes. Anybody that's caring for an individual that's subject to a federal, state, or local quarantine or isolation order or advise any one of the top three, if they're caring for these people, then they are allowed to take time off to care for those people. Anybody that's caring for an employee's child because the school is closed down for whatever reason related to this public health emergency, they're entitled to sick time. And anybody experiencing any other substantially similar condition, this is kind of like the catch all, uh, you can, you know, you're also gonna be required to provide them with sick time. So the top three, one, two, and three, is any of your employees that are like literally in trouble or potentially in trouble. And then the bottom three are the ones where the employee's okay, but they're taking care of somebody that's potentially in trouble. Those are the people that are eligible for paid sick leave. Now, what are the benefits? Well, you are required to pay to provide two weeks, 10 days, 80 hours of paid sick leave. You are required to do that. You have to pay the regular rate if it's any one of the first three items. Remember, those first three items were that they were really affected by this individually. You have to pay two thirds of the rate if they're taking the time off to care for somebody else you can get a refund via a tax credit against your payroll taxes that's paid in every quarter for one, two, and three. Again, the people that are affected by this, you can get a refund of up to $511 a day for that employee. And for four, five, and six, you can get a tax refund of up to $200 a day for the people that are taking time off because they're looking after for somebody. So you gotta get your accountant involved in this calculation as well, but you've gotta provide the benefits. And unfortunately, the money's gonna come out of your pocket first before you can get the refund back from the government. So just be aware that you're gonna have to incur that. 
Now, moving on, there's the Emergency Family and Medical Leave Expansion Act. So remember, we've got regularly right now the Family and Medical Leave Act. Well, that which provides 12 weeks of unpaid leave to people caring after family members or loved ones that or themselves uh, that have become sick or can't take care of themselves. This has now been expanded. Again, it's effective from April 2nd until the end of the year. If it affects anybody with, again, employers with less than 500 full of part-time employees who have been employed for more than 30 days. Um, it adds something to the Family and Medical Leave Act. Now employees can take 12 weeks of job-protected paid leave because they need to take care of a child due to a school closure or a public health emergency. So for anybody that's taking care of children, they get paid leave to do that. You've got to leave their jobs open, although employers with less than 25 employees can be excluded from this requirement. Again, you have to say it's going to be a very big financial detriment to your company. The first 10 days of this can be unpaid with any accrued, they can use paid time off that they've already got accrued. And then after that, you've got to pay at least two thirds of the normal compensation up to 200 per day or $10,000 in aggregate. Again, that is the family medical leave and whether or not that's subject to a tax credit or not, I'm not really sure. Uh, that was a little bit iffy for me right now. So I'll have to look that up later and you can email me, but you have to provide that benefit. So sick leave, paid leave, another big action. You got to get yourself completely familiar Talk to your accountant, talk to your attorney about it, or email me directly if you want more details. The eighth out of 10th action that I want you to be aware of is you need to set up your work from home employees. Many businesses have been forced to shut their doors. They can't come to work. They have to, they're told to send their employees at home. Remember, if you're in any one of those affected areas, you can still operate as a business. Even if you're not an essential business, it's just that you can't operate it on your premises. You got to send everybody home. Now, obviously, if you're a manufacturing or you're doing painting work or restoration work or stuff with your hands, you know, you know, in the auto business, I mean, that's what people are doing. I, clearly, they're not going to really work from home, I guess, unless, you know, some of this stuff can be brought to their homes. So those people really may not be affected. What I'm talking about here is your administrative people. Maybe you have customer service. Maybe you've got accounting people. Maybe you've got sales people. You need to set them up to do working from home. So there's a few things that you need to be aware of to do this. Number one, there were some great managed services providers. One of them I should put on here is called Right Networks, where you can take all, they will do this for you very quickly. They can take your data, they can take your applications, they can take your files and host it on their servers. So therefore, nobody has to come into the office. You don't have to worry about people connecting to your office. People will just connect remotely and directly to their servers on Right Networks, uh, on Right Networks Network. And that way you've got the ability to have them uh, connect in and do their work in the cloud. There, it's much more secure. Everybody has you know, immediate access to this. Everybody is able to you know, do uh, all their work that way without having, uh, you know, without having um, any interruption. So consider moving everything to a managed services company. And again, this is, um, you know, it's Right Networks is the company that I recommend. I think that they are excellent and somebody that you should definitely uh, consider, you know, for your business. Number two, consider temporary reimbursing your employees for them to get faster data plans at home. A lot of my clients are doing this as well. It makes complete sense. It is, I realize it is something that uh, is, you know, would take a little bit more uh, effort to do, but it is definitely something that's worthwhile doing. Um, it can be just a temporary thing. And because it's a temporary thing, that way um, people will, the faster that they work, the more productive they'll be from their homes. Consider investing in a collaboration app. Microsoft Teams, Slack, Zoom, and G Suite are like the leaders in collaboration. Now, these are office applications. All of these companies are offering discounts, free licenses, promotions, particularly to small businesses that are that are sending their workers home as well to get them up and board and using it. And you know what they do? If they combine all the communication and collaboration into one place. So your employees can chat with each other. They can send instant messages to each other. They can have video calls. You can have video conference calls. They can share documents. They can do emails. And they're doing it all together under one platform very quickly in a very collaborative way 
everything is saved there with great searching capabilities. You can go back and find stuff that you might not have that you might do now. You might have a question about it a year from now. These apps are they were fastly growing and great productivity tools before coronavirus happened. Now, because of coronavirus, they are exploding in popularity and usage, and I strongly suggest that you consider a collaboration app. I also strongly suggest that you either consider getting or upgrading your CRM system. My company does a bunch of work with Salesforce and Dynamics and, and Zoho. There are other great products out there like Nimble and Sugar. You've got your, if you have a CRM system already and you've got remote employees or people working from home, it's one database that every, you've got your customers, your vendors, your suppliers, your partners all there. The CRM systems can be integrated with your email and your calendars and your document management. And that way, everybody's on the same page. So even though they're working from home, they can still follow up on the calls they need to make. They can handle service, you know, potential service issues or customer problems. They can make sure they're keeping up to date on the communication things going on with your entire community and with your employees all in one place. They're cloud-based. They are excellent. Definitely something that you want to consider. <clears throat> and finally, when you have your people working from home, you need to make sure that you are considering security. The hackers are out there. They're seeing the chaos that this thing is doing, and they are having an impact already that I am reading. So you have to assign somebody in your office or an IT person. They need to take an inventory of all your workers' devices who are working from home. They need to make sure that their devices have updated operating systems. They need to be running the most recent version of Windows, the most recent version of of Apple, iOS, or, or, or Android to make sure they're secure. They should have all encryption turned on because remember they're connecting into you and your remote services now from home and the data's got to be encrypted. You might, might want to have them download or require them to download mobile security management software so your IT firm can manage their devices remotely. It might just be a temporary thing, but it's still something that is really going to be necessary to ensure your network security. You want to make sure that the, whatever data they're doing is backed up. And you want to make sure they're getting training to make sure they're, they're operating in the most secure way. And they're also operating their applications in the best way as well. So you got to consider security here because I'm telling you right now, uh, the, the bad guys out there that are doing malware and viruses and hacking and data breaches, they're seeing all these work from home employees and they are licking their chops because they can get access to their home computers, which means they get access to your networks and your data and really wreak havoc in a time where you don't want any more havoc being wreaked. Number nine. You do want to establish some regular communications. Set up your CRM system uh, or Constant Contact or MailChimp or Emma or any bulk email service and get yourself on a schedule of communicating to not only your customers as to what you're doing. We're all been getting the COVID-19 updates from all these companies, but they're doing it for a reason, just to ensure their customers that they're going to still be in business and what you're going to be doing to make sure that you stay in business and how they can contact you. But you also also want to be setting up uh, you know, employee communications as well, because again, this is going to end and you want your employees to come back and come back happy. You've got three objectives. You want to be regularly updating your employees wherever they are, whether they've been laid off or not, just some updates on the company, how you're doing, where you're seeing this going, when you think you'll open your doors again, what the plan is. Consider different updates just to keep people in the loop and under the same umbrella. You want to provide education for your employees. My, my sister is a doctor. Uh, she is a, uh, she, every day she is putting out this amazing daily update on coronavirus with just the data and the facts and, and some recommendations. And I'm sharing that with all of my employees. And by the way, if you'd like to be added to her email list, send me an email and I'll be happy to forward it over to her and she'll add you. There are wonderful updates just to keep you just fact-based of what's going on. It keeps them educated. Also keeping your employees educated on the benefits that they deserve, that they get from your health insurance or from uh, your retirement plans or whatever new things are coming out of the government. You want to help them get the most benefits that are entitled to them. They will appreciate that and pay you back in the longer term. And finally, I just believe that you should, you got to be the person with the positive forward thinking outlook. You got to be the one to not see your have your employees see you sweat. You've got to be the one to say we're going to get behind this. We've got we we've righted the ship. We're heading in the right direction. 
some inspirational quote, something positive a couple times a week, just so employees know. People are nervous, they're upset, they're scared about their jobs, they're scared about their livelihoods. You've got to reassure them that you're, whether you believe it or not, you've got to be the one with a positive face. Just think Winston Churchill in the middle of the London Blitz, right, in 1940, the darkest hour there. Uh, he still came out and was inspiring his people with his fighting attitude. That's what you've got to do as well. Finally, the final action, you're going to have to consider your downtime. The next few weeks, you're going to have some busy times and you're going to have some slow times. This is not of your making. You are being forced to not do business. Your customers are being forced to not buy and stay inside. So you're going to have some downtime. My smartest clients are looking at that and saying, you know, I'm going to use my downtime the best way that I possibly can. Some of them are sneaking back into the office or the shop or their warehouse, don't tell anybody, and doing cleanup on their own. You know, maybe them and their spouse, maybe whatever. They're just, they're going in there quietly. Their, their employees aren't coming in. They're keeping everybody safe, but they're using the time to literally do some physical cleanup in their facilities to get it all kind of spruced up. It's not a bad opportunity to do that with nobody around. They're also using the time to clean up whatever databases they have. Their accounting systems, their customer relationship management systems, your inventory systems. What better time during downtime is to finally get prices updated and product names and descriptions and all that together and current and you know ready to go. So that's important. They're using the time to do performance reviews because we're also timely and great with them, right? Now is the time to update your performance reviews. Reach out to your employees, get their managers together with them, have those conversations, fill out the paperwork, make some goals, objectives. Everybody's looking to the future. Those are the kind of things that really like really stand well with employees and really keep them in the loop and will make them feel happy and motivated going forward. They're doing strategic planning for the future because again, I, you've heard me say it a bunch, this is going to end. And when that wave is done, maybe it's a good plan idea right now to take a deep breath and do a little bit of planning as to where your business is going. Maybe some of those product lines that you're selling or some of the repair work you're doing or some of the restoration type of work you're doing, is it really worth it? Was that stuff really profitable last year? That's the time to kind of sit back and look at those numbers and say, you know, maybe it's not worth continuing on with some of that stuff. It's just keeping me busy, but it's not making me any money. Now's a good opportunity to take a look back at that and make some decisions. Online learning is another thing a lot of my clients are doing. They're taking classes, they're bettering themselves, and then of course, just taking personal time. Take a nap, watch Netflix, relax, try and get yourself together. It's a forced opportunity for you to really take light of your, of your life and get yourself together and you know, get a little exercise and get ready to get back to work because you will be getting back to work. Okay, so let me sum up the 10 actions I discussed. Get an SBA loan now, $2 million, 30-year payback, low interest rates. Keep an eye out for any grants that are available to you too. Consider getting local funding from your state or from your region or from your city and any of the consulting resources that are there free, the small business development centers and SCORE. Take advantage of any corporate offers that are available to you. Take a, a Facebook, Microsoft, there's a bunch of people, JP Morgan offering free money to small businesses. Take a deep dive into your general ledger, circle those expenses that you question, freeze those expenses, cut back where you can, negotiate, not discounts, but just different payment terms with your larger vendors and your suppliers and your banker as well. They will be more sympathetic than you can think. They really will be sympathetic to your plight and will help you out. Understand the new tax rules. Yes, you can defer filing and payment until July, but if you're expecting a refund, file now and get the money. Understand the new sick and family leave requirements. They're quite complex. Go through them with your accountant. Go through them with your attorney. So very important for you to know and understand what they are. Set up your work from home employees. Give them the right technology. Put everything into the cloud. Don't forget about security. Focus on collaboration software. Focus on CRM. Get your guys working and working productively. And I bet you long term, you might find yourself having more people work from home, which is good for them and good for you and will help you attract younger workers. Establish regular communications, use your CRM system, use your e like email services as well, constant contact, have a, once or twice a week of good information about the company, information that will help your employees and some update, upbeat positive thinking uh, that will help your employees also feel better about the way things are going. And finally, consider some downtime activities for yourself, you know, cleaning up your office, cleaning up your database, doing some performance reviews, some strategic, act, you know, you know, thinking as well. 
all of that is really, really good and healthy stuff. Hey, before I let you go, I've got a book coming out this year called The uh, the Busy Manager's Book of Lists. There's going to be hundreds and hundreds of book of lists that answer questions to help you manage your business. I've got a little, little one that I'm offering for free. It's a PDF. Um, it's a bunch of lists in there, uh, things like seven great economists that I follow and why and great tax moves you can make this year and podcasts that I listen to and 10 killer apps. I think every business owner should get it completely free. Feel free to email me at gene at marksgroup.net. I'm more than happy to send you a PDF of the busy manager's little book of lists uh, so that it will hopefully be as a sort of addition to this little webinar that we are doing. And by the way, that is my email. This is more contact information, gene at marksgroup.net. It's my Twitter address, my Facebook address. Uh, feel free to reach out to me specifically with any questions that you have. Remember, this is a short-term thing. Conserve cash. Navigate your way through this. This will be behind us. And I do believe, as business owners, a lot of lessons to be learned here about our cash management, relying on one supplier, uh, You know how we have our employees work from home. I think we're going to emerge from this better and stronger than where we were before this whole thing started. There is always a silver lining to this. And I think that we will be better off from this experience. Thanks for listening. Hope you got some good information out of it. And again, reach out if you have any questions. Thanks. Thanks to SEMA.